how y'all doing out there tonight? My name is Pet Killer, and today we're going to be doing a campaign on Dungeons and Dragons. So if I have, have a uh, different audio than usual, then that is because I do. I'm actually trying out a new um, mic. Oh, whoa. Let's actually make sure that I'm actually using it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Desktop audio device. Yep, blam. And then microphone is. <sighs> um, interesting. Huh. Weird. But okay. It's. You probably aren't, guys, can't hear me. Alright, that's probably better. Well, I'll have to figure that out later, but as you'll see, I got a new, uh, new, uh, they're, they're talking in the background, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got a new uh, setup here, and at least headphones and mic. Um, might still use the other mic, we'll just see. Um, weird. Oh well, um, we will just have to... Corseo Virtuoso. Corseo Virtuoso. There we go. That's better. Well, either way, that's all right. All right. Yeah. Like, well, like Ted Williams is technically still alive. He's just cryo frozen. Wow, that's a. Uh... <coughs> so is the head of Walt Disney. Class is How's it going, Chad? Yeah, Alright, let me go ahead and transition yeah. over and we can do our recap. Alright. How do I know you? How do I know you? Oh, I got Who a are you? Why are you coming up on my Facebook feed? Alright. Uh, Half uh, these motherfuckers I'm sorry, I'm I gotta get asked about the weed tonight. Forgot to unmute myself there. You guys can hear me mm -hmm. now, yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. Who are you? <laughs> what are you I'm, doing? I'm your worst nightmare, dirtbag. <laughs> yeah, whatever you're saying, dollar store Batman. Why did you say Martha? <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking all. Uh, you know what? My kids you can't get to sleep. I gotta get out of here, guys. <laughs> Why did you say Martha? What the fuck? <laughs> How many fucking kids is this chick gonna pop out? Fucking A. At least one more. Good Zen Zen. Alright. Well, like fucking... So last time on Dungeons and Dragons, um, you guys, the party, had pushed forward and uh, using combination of uh, search parties as well as scouting parties and um, even making some supply runs themselves, fortified the position um, at the safe point. They were able to uh, save a couple students and finally pushed in uh, to what appeared to be the true objective of the monodrones, or the modrons, which was securing, well, that was never discovered because the party was able to stop the pentadrone in time from securing its objective. As a reward, Primaris had granted a contract to the party, which would allow for, on request, one Modron army to be delivered upon the uh, uh, a certain r ritual being completed. Um, however, the only term of this contract was that all hostility towards uh, the Modrons, as well as the greater part, greater of Mechanicus, would be ceased. And both like. in both also, uh, both sides of the contract would be enforced by inevitables, Maruts to be exper uh, to be exact. And I and I was awoken from my freeze, right? Yes, you. 
awake yet. I like to exercise. I like to exercise the contract to fight them because I'm awake. Fight who? Exercise the contract. Gone. Yeah, I want to bring the army back so I can fight them. Why? You want to fight our own army because they're going to work for us? Yeah, they're going to fight us and train us to be better fighters. I more or less want to see Trevor die, but that's another deal. I want to see if he'll, you know, get in the mix of it if I call the army back. That would, <laughs> that would also be breaking the terms of the contract. That is not... There was no... <laughs> <laughs> Fine, and the hostilities, <laughs> whatever. So you, uh, you you got the terms that we were stuck with because you weren't there. Your name's on it though. Yeah. <laughs> Bad faith negotiation. Uh, unfortunately, the rigid laws of Mechanicus don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so basically, you're trying to find some Mark IV training droids. I want to. I want to get the stuff that we that we got like checked out because there's definitely some things in there that we could use. So as but, Greg, oh, sorry, as you awaken, she owes us a couple good favors and the masters that we saved from the library. Greg, as you awaken, you see that you're surrounded by your compatriots. And a few of the uh, st fac uh, staff members, the uh, they're essentially their duties are servants in nature, come up to the lot of you and present you with a bag. And they... One of them sheepishly presents it to you and um, bows her head and says, This is for saving us. You guys went above and beyond. You spearheaded this for us. And we all kind of pooled together things that we found in the chaos. Um, things that probably won't be as, as missed. <laughs> um, but also, you know, are, are befitting what you guys did for us. So they present you with 160 gold pieces, 800 silver pieces, a shield, as well as a wand, a heavy crossbow, and a very, very shiny rock. Oh, shiny. And I believe, uh, does, uh, oh, uh, what's Zoom? Does he have a... He has detect magic as a ritual. But he so does he, not, we do that. he does not have identify, though, right? Yeah, he does. It's a ritual as well. Okay. He can do unlimited rituals. Yep. So we'll say you guys take the time. Um, he identifies, or he detects magic. They all have faint levels of magic and as he completes the ritual for an identify you find out that the shield is a plus one shield the wand is a wand of the war mage what level one uh, two three or four plus one okay. the crossbow is a heavy crossbow plus one and the stone, a little different. It's not a plus one stone. <laughs> um, it is a stone of good luck. Also known as a luck stone. <laughs> now... This stone, um, it looks like it, it bears the rough visage of a cat with, with green spheres for eyes. Um, when this stone is polished, you gain a plus one <laughs> bonus to ability checks and saving throws. That's after that you polish it and put it on your person. 
Weird how the stone gets horny. <laughs> Hmm. Well, it looks well, like, I mean, there's definitely something for everybody there. Um, uh, I think not Greg should probably have the stone of good luck since he seems to have nothing but bad luck in his love life and deity life and <laughs> mushroom life. I think I'm doing it pretty well for myself, actually. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> if you don't want it, you don't. You don't have to take it. I mean, I was feeling good about myself when I woke up from this weird coma, but go fuck yourself, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Did I have bad luck in my life? I mean, shit. I had an optimistic mood until you fucking ruined it, you stupid turtle. <laughs> oh, the question is, is if the um. Tavern is still. Stay out of it! <laughs> um, Fine, I'll take I mean, a goddamn stone and polish it. Fuck you, man. Wake up get, and you already attacked me. I follow well, you. Know? I'm feeling attacked, dude. After you uh, polish the stone, you uh, receive plus one bonus to all ability checks. And saving throws. Is that a permanent thing, or is that like a one-time use? Um, he's got to take a two mint. Um, yeah, basically, he's just got to attune to it. Fuck it, eh? Hell yeah. That's interesting. My weapon does not require attunement. Most of them do. Nah, <laughs> for basic enchantments, not In so In 5e, much. they do. <sighs> Usually you have to get a pretty hefty enchantment for it. Like a plus three or... I don't even think most plus twos even require it. But anyway. Most weapons require attunement, bus. In 5e, there's not a lot of magic. So... Okay. Um, so... Uh, Griffin is taking, a, I'm guessing Griffin's taking the heavy crossbow. I might as well. I mean, actually I can use the shield too. Because I am so you much front line apparently. But... That's up to you. I, I oh, actually okay. think that my longbow is better. Right now. The what goes better? My current longbow is better. Because I can attack two attacks a turn. And the same well, and sustained damage. I don't think I can use a heavy crossbow, so that like, doesn't do anything. You're a ranger. Me. I guarantee you, you can use a heavy crossbow. But let me see. I'm just double checking like all my stuff to make sure. By the way, Trevor. Hmm. Plus two weapons don't require attunement either. Hmm. Depends on the weapon, then, because some do. Yeah, they're usually named weapons. Yeah, my current longbow does a D8 plus 7 with two attacks a turn. This heavy crossbow does a D10 plus 6. So, and only one attack a turn. I think I think that my longbow is better. Yeah, if it's only one attack per turn, then it's less than what I have now too. So I don't really care. We could we could honestly sell it for all I care. Yeah, well, uh, basically, I would have to take a feat in order to get this thing max effect. So, do you want the shield? I I mean I it would only it would put me at a twenty for my AC, but I'm good at a nineteen for a while. So if it would help your AC to have that shield, then it would like, put me at a twenty. As, it would put me at a twenty as well. Yeah, so you could be a twenty and I could be a nineteen. But if you're gonna play if you're gonna play more up front, then yeah, you should use the shield. If you're gonna play back then Well, I'm done back because I'm good at back. But now that I have the whip The whip the whip, I can do pretty well either way. So <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah, we'll figure it out. If... I'm not. I'm not worried about it right now. We can figure it out. So, yeah, if nothing else, give me your weak shield, and I'll get. You can have the better shield, and that still gives me a nineteen. I, we can do that too. So, but, but yeah, this crossbow is just not. I don't think it's worth a feat. About the only thing that's really good about that feat is that it allows me to use ranged weaponry from in from melee status without a uh, disadvantage or attacks of opportunity. Uh, Ron, are you going to stick with two-handed fighting, or do you want to have a ranged weapon as well? I'm sticking with two-handed fighting. It's what I do best. Okay. I mean, I could throw daggers if I want to be ranged, but that's no fun. Ooh, that's look, he thinking, took like, maybe one d4 damage. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Right, dagger. don't you have sneak attack, though? I do. 5e sneak attack sucks. You have to have advantage in order to get sneak attack. Yeah, but if you, like, if you take the... You have the cunning action to hide, and then on your next attack would technically put you at advantage if they can't see you. True. And you can do a 30-foot sneak attack. If you have so, a barbarian uh, totem, or totem barbarian of the wolf as your buddy, you can do sneak attacks every count, every round. Yeah, that shit's crazy. If I, <laughs> if, I have a, if I have advantage on the roll, I can use an attack or ranged a finesse or ranged weapon, which I have finesse weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're just saying that you'd you'd be able to do additional sneak attacks from longer range. Yeah, that's that's what we're at. That would, you know, keep your your squishiness out of the way. Mm -hmm. If you want to stick with two-handed fighting, I was thinking maybe you could use the shield. But if you want to stick with two two weapons, then that's... A shield wouldn't do you any good. Well, Rogues are not pitching with shields at all. Oh, Rogues rogues do not use shields. Yeah, so... <sighs> All right. Wolf, well, you guys are ready to press on. on. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out the shit. If we get into combat, we'll just figure it out quick. Okay. All right. So. Figure it out, bro. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> Fucking figure it out. All right. So. <clears throat> Just give me your weak shield right now, and okay. I'll. That's only, and then like I said, if I do um, go melee, I'm not hurting now. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So as you guys kind of divvy out the loot, and kind and it gets identified. You see Professor Hamville come by. And he kind of looks you guys over and and he uh if if he could furrow his brow, I mean obviously he has a mechanical face. He he stares intently at you and he goes, Well by God You guys put quite the ass whooping on them on them robots. Why don't you guys go ahead and retire to your quarters, sleep it off, and rest up. Well done. As you, as he turns around, you can see sticking out of his back are numerous daggers, javelins, and arrows. And can I see the, can I see the scar from where I like tore him a new asshole? Oh yeah. It, it's kind of like, but it's kind of like looking for a scar in uh in in the back of a por- porcupine. Oh, okay. <laughs> at this point, looking for scars on something on Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Which scar am I supposed to be staring at? There's a lot here. <laughs> like a well, lot. I mean, like as long as he remembers. The only thing that this crossbow does that's better than anything else 
is that it's magical, which means it ignores vampires and stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> All right, so you guys have, as you guys retire, um, you find, you got, all of you, strangely enough, for one reason or another, get a, aside from what's happened, a, a restful night's sleep. You wake up in the morning, and you are treated to a, a, a symphony of, of, of good smells. And it, it's, it's kind of jarring. It, it puts you off guard a little bit because usually you guys wake up and there's not a whole lot, you know, in your dismal little shacks. Smells like elf weed in my room. <laughs> a smell of, of cooked meats pierces the uh, veil of elf weed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm going outside. If I smell cooked meats, <laughs> you you have my attention. I'm going. Mm-hmm. Mine, too. I mean, I'm a bird, so meat sounds amazing to me. As you step out, as you all step out, you see um, Ara Mambus building spits while a blue tiefling... Nah. I will is man, manning a is manning one of the spits that's been constructed, as well as hurriedly maintaining a few grills, uh, or griddles that are been hastily constructed over a few campfires. You see large hams and and bacon and and steaks being hastily cooked over these uh, se a series of fires. Kind of in the the mid area where you guys had had a, uh, I believe it was the uh, dance floor during your guys's first party. Um, if memory serves, Hopper, you see a lar another dragonborn. This one male, setting down some good sized rocks. And logs to use as as uh, furniture, um, and of course you recognize um, the the dragonborn as Prechen, and the uh, and the tiefling as Lenice. Hopeful. <clears throat> As you, she, her, or she, That's, she's alerted and sees clear, you. Right? She goes, oh, I was about to message you. Come on in, come, grab some food. We're actually thanking you guys for helping. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> look around at, like, all of this chaos and food and just be like, all right, <laughs> It's going to be a good day. And I'm just going to follow Lenise and just kind of hang out with her for a little bit after checking on Aura and Mombit to make sure that they're, like, cool. No side effects or anything. Okay. Well, shortly, uh, shortly after, you know, the Zan and his girlfriend um, approach uh, Fentra. And... They uh, they uh, throw some pelts over and kind of make the seats a little more um, comfortable. And she starts uh, she pulls out a flute and starts playing a nice song. And as this all go goes along, um, Ara kind of leads over to you guys and says. So, are we going to fucking have a rager, or how are we going to celebrate this? Well, ragers are definitely a thing. <laughs> uh, last one we had 
uh, a bit too much to drink and we all suffered the afterwards, but it was fun as hell. Pudding. <laughs> That's all I can say anymore. Pudding. Pudding. Well, I'm, I'm still I'm, waking who up. Had, who was it that we had a, a beer stand with? That was... Uh, that was Pre Pretchen and the... Uh, oh, what was uh, his name? The uh, monk. Who's the drunken master. The drunken master monk. I got his name right here. Either way. Um, Vincenzo. <laughs> What about Vincenzo? Oh, Trevor was asking who they who you guys were doing the 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 beer stand with or the the cake stand? Yeah, or, uh, yeah, the elf stands or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, everybody that we had at the party before is there for the most part. Uh, it, it's just a handful of them. Um, you don't see the rest of the popular guys. Um, what Lin the bros are doing them more? I don't know. Just, just calf, just the, or sorry, uh, just Brechin the Dragonborn. Sienna's um, not there. No. Um, <laughs> and Mombus is the only one out of the rich clique, and and Linise is the only one out of the study group. Okay. What about the hot chicks? No. They're not there. Benches. <laughs> mm -hmm. You kind of get the impression that um, some people might still be in the infirmary. Um, as you chat everybody up, other people are already out and about, you know, um, doing things uh, for the town or for the university or for the academy. Um, it sounds like... Uh, Calf, Vincenzo, and Xena are actually taking turns guarding the vault at the moment. So one's like chilling inside the vault. The other two are running like a, a perimeter around it. Um, the uh, okay. Yeah, so I mean there's students that are racked out in the infirmary. Some are help, help manning the walls. Some of them are Trying to locate things that have been miss that have gone missing through the chaos. In fact, that's where a lot of the paladin and and cleric students are off. You know, hunting down people who took took this opportunity to to ransack the uh, the different buildings. Okay. These uh, like these pits and stuff that they made for the for all the meats. Are they like? Can we keep them as permanent structures, or are they just like set up, tear down kind of deals? Well, uh, right now, uh, Era and Mombus have just kind of constructed them for uh, to be temporary. But if you guys want, you guys could probably reinforce them so they last longer. Well, I know we had talked about. Um, we eventually we're going to throw another party, um, so if we could have these a little bit more permanent, you know, we could do a little bit fancier food for the next one and kind of have it be a little bit more well to do. Because I remember that was the one thing that the popular girls had said was, like, it was a fun party, but our area is not very nice, and if we wanted people to hang around more, we needed to like upgrade our digs a little bit. Sure. Um. I will say that would probably come with uh, um, spend having I spend money on a higher quality digs, <laughs> but uh, that would come with in your next semesters. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm not worried about it. Um, but that is something you could use to, you know, serve better food. We'll say. Yeah. 
And I guess we can use our tavern connection to increase the alcohol, too. Yep. We have a lot more money to throw around now than we did the first one. <laughs> yeah, you do. So we're going to say you spent the rest of the day feasting and, and you help out a little bit. Uh, you guys get mixed in guard duty. Um, Monday rolls around and you guys start to go into class. Um, class structure is kind of different now. You spend time in, in class and you also spend time um, making repairs or doing whatever you guys can think of to help the town in some positive manner. Um, however, due to the circumstances, your professors tell you that you guys are going to start your primers on magical items, meaning by the end of this year, so long as everything goes well, you guys will be except, uh, allowed to buy and barter in the magical items trade. Sweet. That would help a lot. Yeah, it would. That's a cold-ass hockey. <laughs> they warn you that usually this is a privilege reserved for second year students. It's because magic yeah, items yeah. can be important boons, but and they can also be detrimental to the user or the team if relied upon or if cursed. Um... So that's why they typically try to save it for until, you know, they students have adventuring experience. However, um, and they kind of look at you guys and say, some of you guys are excelling way faster than other students, and we have to recognize that. Damn right, better recognize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I was frozen <laughs> last time. Um... And some of you already have magic items. Yeah. Um, so, what this will... What this will mean is basically at the end of the year, you guys will take a knowledge test to see if you guys can... basically be accepted into the guild, and then you guys will be able to buy and sell and barter with your magic items. Hold on to your butt, bro, Chacho. Um, I will come up with the mechanic for that. Um, I have not figured that one out yet. Well, question. Uh, can we use our um, electron credits or our school credits for that? Uh, if it is a uh, an academy store. So if you go to the commissary and you deal in their expanded inventory for magic item users then you could does that make sense yeah yep. so it's not like you could you know go off go off campus and use it right it's only good on like academy grounds right okay I, um, well, we don't have a lot of free time right now, but I do want to do that one thing that I, um, messaged you about, um, where I want to get the, the rangers that have companions, um, to go into town and set up, like, a, a petting zoo with their companions for, like, the children to try and raise morale a little bit. Okay. So that is, that would be considered a... So yeah, and, and honestly, this 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 free time is kind of whatever you guys can think of positively affecting the town. So mm. if if it's something like that, then that you can use your time to do that. <clears throat> um, so first, also, give me a persuasion roll to see if you can, and how are you going to persuade them? Um, I'm just going to say, like, you know. Th think of it as the children of this town have seen a lot of 
a lot of damage and destruction and some scary things lately. Um, I think it would probably be a benefit to them to just, you know, maybe maybe have a couple pets with uh, with some of our companions because let's let's be honest here ginger's fucking adorable and i'm sure that any other ranger out there is going to pick something that's at least moderately cute um so i think it would be good uh it also gets you know the rangers out there little exposure maybe these kids want to grow up and be rangers of their own someday so there's benefits on both sides there why would you want to be a rogue because rogues are cool. We do cool. And not the ones I've met. <laughs> oh, said the fucking turtle. <laughs> yeah, said the turtle. I'm, I'm a turtle with a dragon. I'm the coolest man you've ever met. All right, go ahead and roll your persuasion. That's like saying you're the smartest kid with Down syndrome, the coolest turtle I met. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever hang out with Down Syndrome kids? They're fucking awesome, dude. Uh, you said Persuasion? Yes, sir. Seven, uh, 17. All right. So you get the entire Ranger class uh, to go along with it, um, including, um, what's her name? Your, your professor, um, Joanne Walkthorne. Yeah. So they all think Happy. it's a great idea, including Zan. Um, and so you guys, how often do you want to do this? Um, I don't know. Once a, we don't have to do it like all the time. Maybe like once a week or every two weeks or something like that. Okay. So weekly, you go down and, and entertain the kids. Go ahead and give me a... Are you uh, proficient in nature? Yeah. Um, technically, this will be a performance check, but... Uh, Go ahead and add your proficiency bonus because you're proficient in nature. So I'm rolling a performance check and adding my nature bonus? Uh, your proficiency bonus. My proficiency, okay. Plus three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sixteen. All right. So, Ginger charms the pants off of everybody. And the others do fairly well as well. All in all, it's a very good performance. Um, week after week, you guys return. Um, kind of brighten the moods of, of the children, which creates a lot of, eases a lot of tension with, uh, especially with the parents who are pushed almost to the breaking point. Um, it's something that the kids look forward to. And you approve the morale of the town. Alright, does anybody have anything, any other, or anything that they would like to do to positively impact this effort? Well, um, you said that there's a heavy mechanic, heavy repair stuff needed. Yep. So I've got good stuff in smithing now. So I might as well do that. Okay. So you're going to spend your time making repairs and... Repairs, watch. I mean, I I'm, I'm, can definitely keep an eye out for enemy sure. enemies. So go for, ahead. And, uh, go ahead and give me a, um, a smithing roll. How do, we, how, how do we do crafting? I can't remember on this one because it's not technically a... It's just double proficient. Uh, mine's just double proficiency, right? Or is it actually adding intelligence or adding? I think it's well, depending on what you're making. I think is the check, but if it's right. just like building that door, it's yeah, it would probably it's either be int plus proficiency plus any yeah. modifiers. Double, double proficiency, but yeah, yeah. Because of Rune Carver, I get double proficiency. Sure. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. So. Uh, okay. So intelligence plus double proficiency. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So I have the D twenty plus six. able to craft a lot of the metal fittings needed around the um, around the campus whether that be for doors and door hinges or framework for the doors where iron slats would be slid into iron <laughs> wooden slats sorry uh, no, we know iron says, slats they could be a lot more stronger <laughs> Well, if, if you want to upgrade them, uh, go ahead. If you want to do upgrades like that, go ahead and uh, give me another crafting check. Do we, do we have any of those super hard metals that we can use? I thought we had a couple of those. We have... We still have that, like, obsidian stuff. I think we have all of that left, which is like 45 pounds or something like that. I'm looking. Yeah. in that notebook. <laughs> um, oh no, we had 21 pounds of pink rock. You guys got rid of that? Yep, which we did. Um, how much? Shit. Pounds of pink stone, seven pounds of obsidian each. So no, twenty-one pounds of that obsidian stone. Mm. Can I can I use that to reinforce the gate? Um. All right. So you make slats instead of using wood. You make slats out of that. Out of that. Uh, one of the gates will out of pitch glass. And no, I'm asking you if I can first. You could for one door. I'll say that's enough. Um, to the, okay, is the rest of the party agreeable for this? Because it is a joint loot. I don't really want to use it to modify a door. I feel okay. like there's more that we can do. With Sorry, it later. this would be like a gate door. Yeah, no, I don't want to use it for that. Okay. Okay, then I won't do that. I'll use metal then. Use iron. All right. So yeah, you're able to reinforce or make uh, iron slats. Um, okay, my craft check is eighteen again. Okay. You spit them out, and you're able to reinforce uh, one of the gates um, to help resist. Uh, invasions in the future. Does anybody else have anything? Um, I do want to work with like the the alchemy professor <clears throat> to try and like restock all the he healing potions and things like that. Okay. Can I get you to make some blasting powder while you're in there, please? 
I've been looking. We for can, it. yeah. I would love I mean, some blast powder. Work. If they have the stuff for it, I, I will absolutely do that. Um. In this, what is? What's the D and D equivalent of that? Blasting powder. Um, you can probably. There, there's a simple magical item, a simple item called Thunderball. Thunderball is, is weak. Uh, there is. But there's... actually, in 5e, there is blasting powder. Bus in 5e, there is uh, blasting uh, powder. It's I'm about pulling it up. Is it black powder? Is that what it's supposed to be? It's called blasting powder. It's actually a 5e item called blasting powder. All right, I know. But yes, it's it's low level D and D, low level gunpowder. All right, all out. Um, because you guys technically haven't discovered black powder yet, but well, we yeah, did make that grenade thing there's the, though. There's the gun thing. There's the gun people already. They're talking about it. Um, that one like perf the right the you one guys professor are helping that we got that stuff for. You guys haven't gone all the way through his his uh, thing yet, though. Well, then I would I would probably spend time helping him with that as well, trying to fur further that cause. But yeah, uh, we'll say blasting powder is a different alchemical substance. Um, so you can create that. Okay. So go ahead and give me two crafting checks. That'd be the same thing, intelligence plus proficiency, or...? Yes, sir. Okay. Good thing I'm dumber than a bag of hammers. Let's do this shit. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's a nat 20. <laughs> Alright, so... so uh, 23 for the first one? Alright, so in your spare time, you pump out a considerable number... Of health potions, minor ones, okay. um, to help restock the medical supplies on campus. D and D gods giveth, and D and D gods taketh away. I get a natural one on my second roll for a four. Oh, please tell me no. That could very well blow up the alchemy lab. I could. You were standing in front of a pretty sizable cauldron. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Let me look up the rules. This is for the blasting powder. Yeah. We figured. So, I, I, as soon as I rolled it, I was like, oh, no. 3d6. Flash an additional d6. Oh, fuck. To a maximum of 10d6. Oh, no. Well, you should have 40 hit points, so you should be able to survive two-thirds. I got I got oh, 39 yeah. hit points. Yeah. Yeah. And I have my I have my spells, so like, I can heal myself. I have my spells. As long as it's not fucking, like, just enough to kill me. Oh my, he's giving me the vipers. It wouldn't be enough to kill me outright if it's 10d6, but it would be close. Well, it's kind of, are you going to be hurt or are you going to the infirmary? Is kind of the question we'll be at answering yeah. here. That's a fun sound. There's a shake and there's a throw. All right. You dead. <laughs> you dead. Twenty 
I'm sorry, you fucked up a fireball. I really am. <laughs> yeah. 31 damage. Holy fuck. Uh, <laughs> and how much of the alchemy labs left? So. <laughs> Zero. Ooh. Fuck your alchemy lab. It's gone. Your that corner, shit's gone. Your corner's gone, and there's like a nice cartoonish sized imprint of where you went through the thatch wall. Great. <laughs> Good thing you have a good thing you have your shell. Yeah, right. Does he get a, a reflex save for that by chance? I'm gonna say just because. Well, one, it's inconsequential because. Um, you can heal. Yeah, he's gonna heal up, but. It was kind of whether or not he's going to spend downtime in the infirmary, which he's not. Um, we'll just not worry about it. Okay. <laughs> just no combat today. Yeah. Tomorrow you heal up. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to heal myself a little bit just so that I don't, you know, look like a bag of hammered dog shit walking <laughs> around. Right. I'm casting Cure Wounds at second level two times. All right. As you're doing that, Joan Walkthorn comes up to you, your professor, and goes, Try not to push yourself. Just go ahead and take the rest of the day off. I'm almost back up to full hit points. I had 17 on the first one and 11 on the second one. There you go. So, All right. I just have, like, a, I have a cut, like, under my eye. <laughs> just walking around. All right. So, is there any other ways that you guys think you can help the, the city or the town? Or the academy? Oh, yeah. I believe with my, my planning skills, I can uh, um, plan routes of egress and emergency um, emergency rally points to and teach the citizens about a little bit more of the stealth maneuvering during those attacks to get them through dangerous situations into into safety areas. Okay. Go ahead and give me I'll let you pick a, persu a persuasion or performance check um, and go ahead and roll at advantage for your bounty hunter background. Thirteen. Okay. So, you're able to help uh, um, the citizens uh, not only hide better but uh, have laid out, better laid out plans of egress um, and ways that they can keep themselves safe during um, a hostile siege. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the, the raw recruits for the city guard in hand and teach them actually how to use their weapons because apparently they weren't very effective archers. On the city wall. You mean on the shitty wall? <laughs> <laughs> well, God dang, my go is can't break it down my shitty it's, wall. It's not the fact that they weren't effective; it's just the sheer raw number that was sent after them. But basically, all of the city guards died, so I'm going to train the new recruits. Okay. So we'll do. I'll figure it Combat. out. Just, just tell me what uh, I need to... Uh, you guys are level 5? Yeah. yeah. Combat uh, check with advantage? Just just tell me what you roll. What am I rolling? Combat check plus advantage? Yeah, just roll a d20. And add your proficiency. Can I add my dexterity too? No. 
Uh, 21. Bring up to 26. So, yeah, you're able to help train the new round of guards and recruits. Um, however, combat training is only one part of it. They're going to need to learn how to find criminals, how to uh, suss out suspects, as well as locate stolen or illicit goods. Oh, Ooh, that's, that's me. Job. Yeah. That's me, baby. Okay. Let me teach them how to be more perceptive in those conversations. This one, give me an investigation check at advantage. Investigation check with advantage. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Fifteen. Okay. Son of a bitch, seriously? All right. You rolled twice, yeah? You're, you're letting me down, not Greg. You're letting me down. No, that's... He was able to, good. Yeah, he's able to teach the... You got to remember, this is 5e, right? We're, we're not looking for 30s, you know? <laughs> not at level 5. <laughs> we're not looking for... Tw I mean, very rarely will you see I'm... a DC in the 20s. I mean, and then higher than that, it's not... <laughs> Unless you are legitimately uh... not meant to do it. I'm not level 5 yet. Wait, hold on. I lied. Yes, I am. I was like, yes, you are. The only one that's not in Zoom. He's close, though. Yeah. Um, I, the only other thing, I guess, is I would try and, like, refill the stores and maybe go out on, like, hunting trips and stuff with... Whoever does that for the town and okay, trying and yeah, try and just replenish all the stores. All right, give me a survival check. Yo, it was gonna be one of those, and that's the one I didn't have pulled up. God damn it! Oh, okay. That's uh, sixteen. Oh wait, nineteen. I had to add my proficiency because I'm proficient in that. So, 19. So, you're able to hunt a good amount of game over some time. However, you also uncover almost like somebody... Unseen had also presented you with um, a couple meadows of, of edible mushrooms and and plants. Um, no, dibs on mushrooms. They're, none of them are psychedelic, of course. They're all for edibles, oh, so like morels. Oh, I take my claim off of them. <laughs> morels and, and uh, um, sweet grass and other edible plants as if somebody had purposely planted for them for you to find. Oh, I, uh, is that my druids? Yeah, it's, it's got to be, be the, the fey creatures or whatever they are. Yeah, baby. Then it's back for more. Um, I want to... It doesn't have to be right now, but eventually I'm going to want to talk to them. Because, I mean, they're helping us out a lot, so I feel like maybe doing some kind of favor for them again. One day... I'd like to roll the dues. One day you that's... notice a mineral deposit in the woods that's out of the ordinary. Not... Well, I'm going to go check that out then. Okay. So, 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 you're in the woods and you notice in a, um, in 
a rock face of clay and limestone. You notice dark, almost black and amber uh, mineral layerings within the limestone and clay as you get closer. Roll can roll to seduce. <laughs> to seduce. You want to seduce the rocks? <laughs> I want to touch it lovingly. Shut up. I want to sex the minerals right out of it. <laughs> oh, you just brought my first album, Sex Minerals. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Vitamin D, that's a good one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess I'm just gonna go and... uh, <laughs> Don't take my love for granted. Oh, that's a good one too. Shit, Jesus. I missed it the first time. <laughs> um, does it what like so? Is it is it just like a white stone with like mineral lines running through it, or like? Yeah. So there's, if you want to think about it, there's lines of amber with with these. Uh, black spheres within the amber sections. So if you think of like uh, what clay looks like or limestone looks like naturally in a rock face, um, you'll just see these bulges of of, uh, of amber with uh, with that uh, material in it. Well, I'm going to try and, amber right here. I'm going to try and take as much of that as possible. Put it in the bag of holding. Bring it back to have it oh, inspected. All right. So, how much does he get? Roll me a strength check first. Okay. You know the turtle's strong. Come on. Twenty-one. Well, if you're willing to spend the entire a long time there, um, <laughs> you pull out twenty four. Uh, yeah, twenty four pounds of it. It. I know amber is is a good component for like spells and stuff, so I know that'll be helpful. But now remember, it's just the it's just amber in color. Okay. And it has black amber. spears within. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll I'll spend some time out there. I'll take all 24 pounds and then I'll put it in the bag of holding and just bring it back to the academy. Hey, um, we still have that Gatling, um. Crossbow, don't we? That has it's been. Already... Um, that has been given over to other people to look at. Okay, because I was going to try and make a couple more of them, mount them on the walls. It's a tech. Uh, so I will say now that you are well versed in craft, uh, in smithing. Um, you realize it's it's not just mechanical; it's also has magical components. So, so just straight oh, up yeah. crafting them. Um, yeah, it's a techno magic device, basically. Okay. Um, There's oh, significant arcane stuff involved in that. Sounds like. All right, so you uh, come back with the spoils of your of your hunting trip. Um, and you also have a sack full of um, of, of mineral ore deposit. Um, do we want to approach Mr. Pink at some point and find out like what our haul was from that caravan? Since you brought up the like mechanical crossbow, like see if Mr. Pink has got any of that money or whatever we're getting is he still alive is that a question that's a good question is mr pink still alive 
Yes, he is alive and well, and to remind you, uh, um, he puts your earnings basically into investments, so that way you guys wouldn't be pinched for the absurd quantity of, of money that you guys had made on that job. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you will see some dividends at the end of the summer. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Like, you, are we getting dividends? He just, uh, when, you, uh, when you talk to him about it, because you do see him throughout, um, he says it, don't expect it in a form of something you could spend. Okay. And you guys made an absurd haul, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. All right. All right. So, um, bus. Real quick question. Um, it, it's not re relevant to now, but to level up. Um, can I use um feats that are strictly like elven or something like that? Because there's no Aracora feats. We'll talk about uh, we'll talk about that off of uh... okay. Um, hold, hold on, I guess... sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Ah, I got epic quick. I want to go to the library with my character. With uh, the great, not Greg wants to go to the library and do some research into sigil writing. Okay. And the research I want to do in sigil writing is not only do I mark the bodies for those that I recall, but I want to embed into my sigil a personal recall so if I ever needed to recall the, the people I sent to Avernus I can recall them back to me for aid one second guys <laughs> whoa Amber is the color of your image. I thought you were going to do, ooh, that smell. <laughs> Can't you <laughs> smell that smell? Could have. That's just the alchemy lab on fire. Pay no attention to it. Uh, you can't smell anything. You burn your nostrils when you blow up the alchemy lab. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I can't, I can't smell anything anymore. My taste buds. Why do I smell things in my taste buds? <laughs> Sorry about that. What if you're asking about taste buds? Waifu is calling. That just Ooh. means that he's going to be acting like a snake or he's like, sticking his tongue out. <laughs> okay. He's a snake. So, <laughs> you are doing research into trying to get things from a uh, recall souls you've sent to Avernus. Right. right. To call them to call them to my aid in in the time, so they would essentially be. I want to see if it's possible when I send them to, when I in, in my sigil writing of the bodies that I kill to send to Avernus. I want to be able to see if I can recall them to my aid when necessary. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a religion check. I mean, yeah, because they're technically this is the dealings of outsiders. Uh, that's 21. All right. So you find out that, uh, especially in the, um, the Nine Hells, um, many greater demons who get underlings in their service are typically very fickle about letting them go 
even if they've been sent to or sent from other sources um, Tell the wife to quit sending you booby pictures. We're trying to play games. Seriously. <laughs> so. Usually these involve more contracts. And perceived benefits for. Um, for that deity. Or for that uh, demon. Or, okay. or fiend, or well, we'll say fiend because they could be a demon or a devil. Um, but yeah, it usually requires more sacrifices or deeds. And it's usually, depending on the entity, either laid out in a contract or made in a deal of some kind. So, warlock stuff. So, more or less, more contract signing, or you'd have to trust the nature of a chaotic evil being or a uh, lawful evil being. Okay. Good to know. As the nights wear on, you do hear in your sleep the familiar sound of the demon which you serve or it's technically a devil, but we'll say fiend. Um, you feel her scratching at the back of your head. Okay. You hear her voice. Like the fires of a... Of, of a very, very... <clears throat> pow like a very, very intense set of coals not extremely radiating heat but still very quite warm at at its locus mm. you hear it softly but it's there you are losing your connection to me You are losing yourself to another. You have owed me at least one more soul than what was bargained for, for you sent it to her. She is my enemy in the blood war, and you gave her a soldier to fight against me. Unfortunately, I'm. Do... Oh, go ahead. Oh, am I am I able to talk to this being in my head? Yeah, uh, you can attempt to. Okay. Well, it would technically be celestial because they're from different planes, correct? She is speaking telepathically to you, so it's in whatever language you are more comfortable with comprehending, because it's in your sure. mind. Okay. So I'm speaking to her telepathically. I'd want to talk to her and say, listen, I'll promise to be your general if you promise me an army when the time comes. Every soul that I take, it belongs to you until then. You have already made a deal with me. Send me fresh fodder for the blood war. In your travels... And the flow of fodder has stopped. I felt a soul that was was screaming to me pass right by my level of of the nine hells and was sent somewhere else. That was not my fault. I didn't send anyone past you. Every soul I claim is for you. Someone higher up on the levels must have claimed that soul. I know it was where it was sent. I can feel the corruption within you. 
You are becoming one of hers. You know who I speak <laughs> of. You've talked to her. <laughs> haven't you? Anything to get me out of this forsaken deal that you've cursed me with. So you are going back on our terms? Mm. Terms I never agreed to in the first place, but I will continue to serve you if and only if you allow me to take control of the army when the time is right. You feel as if maybe out of spite you feel the heat intensifying a little more. You were promised a higher rank than a Lemur or Lemure. You were promised a form that you could actually use, not that of a normal de devil. That was the bargain. Um. Now, if you prove yourself and you could make up for this soul as well as send more my way, become stronger, who knows what the future could hold? I can send you if this, if the coming war that I foresee happens, I will gladly send you every soul that crosses my path. And when the time is right, and I recall the army of these souls, we will double, even triple in numbers, and your army will grow to strengths unimaginable. Listen, it pains me to have to go through these measures. But the night hags have kind of tightened their coffers a bit. So I'm going to be blunt with you. I need brokers like you. But do not overstep your bounds. Now what if you are truly committed to increasing my army? Go seek out... Someone more connected to this realm and its gods who could purge you of this infestation. As you will. His name is Metnus Grudik. He's a student here. He is a dwarf. Oh, dwarf student? Metnus Grubnik. Melnus Grudnik. Melnus. Melnus, sorry. Melnus. Grubnik. Yes. He is familiar with these spore infestations. He knows how to get rid of them. I don't, I don't think that one. Okay. Perfect. I will seek out Melnus. He would also make a great servant. Squire. How you make him serve me, I will leave that up to you. Hmm. Thank you. Is there anything else anybody wants to accomplish? Oh, do I ever get a letter back from Jimmy after the one that I sent him? Like, from a while ago? Ah, yes. You do get a letter. More plainly written. It says... 
after events of late, I have one request and we can go ahead and kick off the shindig. Dig? But not now. We must wait until February has left and March is greeting us. Okay. I will come find you at the usual tavern. Be there. The first eve of March. Be there. Be square. Um, so... With... Um, all the... Constant... Uh, work, working with Arya... How are... How, is, how are things progressing? Are we... Friends, beyond friends. I'm pretty sure that Ron's interested about his his half work. <laughs> well, see, at least she's a half work. As I've stated, oh, you guys have formally befriended and recruited um, Molar, Mombus, and Ara, or Ara. Well, I meant. Romantic, ah, because oh. face it, I've been we've been flirting both both sides pretty heavy. Well, you, I mean, you guys haven't pushed that yet. Well, actually, take that one. One of you did, but got cock blocked by a letter. <laughs> no, that I was. I would have had it too if it were for you, Bedlin kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I think what he's saying, Trevor, is like you've never like officially broached that subject with her. Just like I haven't done it with uh, Lanice, right? Uh -huh. So okay, this isn't but like I would have had it too. This isn't like Fire Emblem. You can't it. slap your units together and just in combat and be like, oh yeah, we're gonna hit it off. <laughs> All right, so but we're still at least cordial then. So yes, you guys have a very very positive reputation with them. Okay, cool. All um, right, I can't think of anything else. I've done all my free time. That are I, you uh, going to keep your minerals to yourself there? Uh... No, I'm taking them to, to Aura because um, I want to know if she knows anything about these. Because um, I'm assuming Zoom is probably visiting his family <laughs> right now. Or um, something where, like, you know, he's not around, so I would just go to Ara to see if she could help me figure out what these rocks are. Well, Zo Zoom, I, uh, I don't think Zoom has any, uh... I think he's an orphan. I'm not sure. Well, no, I don't think he has any metallurgy knowledge. Oh. I'm gonna get with, uh, or I'm gonna have, uh, message Zoom and have him, uh, give me some rolls and, and tell me what he did during this time. Okay. Um... So yeah, we'll I guess go. I would go to Ara, Ara or like whoever, whichever professor has some kind of metallurgy background All right. that can tell me what this stuff is for. Let's see if Ara... Okay, yeah, Ara, Ara actually knows what this is. Can't get magical stuff yet until end of semester? Correct. Okay. Ara looks at you and goes, yeah, where the fuck did you find this beauty? Found it in the woods I'm one day. A sheer chance. Took as much of it as I could. Oh, well. So this is fucking bauxite. B a u x, i t e. Typically, they find these these beauties in clay, limestone, but um, on its own. Fucking worthless. Damn, I keep wanting to go British. <laughs> it's fucking worthless. But, if you find another mineral by the name of uh, Thortvite, you create box iron. Now that, box iron, that's the, that's the stuff of... Uh, 
That's that's a good metal right there. So box iron. It's lighter than regular iron. And it weathers a lot slower. Meaning armor has a plus two max dex added to it. But the armor must be made majority of the metal in composition. Armor is so also treated as one class lighter. Mithril with, from um, but it, 3 5. But it retains the same disadvantages on stealth. Okay. And Weapons light. using this metal use dexterity for their um, attack, uh, attack and damage rolls, are basically considered finesse weapons. Uh, and then half the item weight for all uh, items composed of this metal. Does that include flight? You said disadvantages on stealth. Does that include flight? Because uh, I can't wear medium armor while flying. Uh, so yeah, it brings it down to lightweight. Or light armor. Light armor, so I can actually wear it. So I can get a full breastplate. Correct. And actually, Okay. Nice. Um, it just, but you oh. know, you still. Ha so the way, at least the way I interpret uh, advantage disadvantage on stealth checks. That's why I made this distinction is because a lot of the armor that gives you disadvantage is because the metal clanks against other metal pieces. It's noisy when you're moving. That's still there. Okay. Um. Since since we're with Aura, can she tell me about that fucking plate. stone that we found? Yeah, that sil that silverish looking plate thing. She goes. She looks. She goes. Let's go to the fucking back room before we talk about that beauty. I'm back in the smash. <laughs> To the back room, let him smash. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll follow. So she hastily shuts All the door us? behind you guys. Uh, yes. And she calls over seductively. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Three on one, baby. She Three goes, on one. I don't know where. You guys fucking got that from? But it worried the hell out of Professor Hamble. I think that metal has something to do with the cataclysm that happened. You know, the thing that created all the pink aether rock and yeah. has kind of created a lot of problems for this fucking planet. It's essentially useless and it's kept in a, in a case like that so that, well, so that it doesn't give you the goddamn, the, the bloody consumption. Oh. Apparently it poisons you. Or sickens you, or something. If left around it, I pressed Hanvil. Made him mad, but he said, "If you're willing to, something about if you're willing to have a smith, you know, die for it, you could make a weapon that's similar to adamantine." But its uses are much more darker. He would not tell me what it's called, though. Depleted uranium. Got it. Yeah. Uranium-234. Pretty much, yeah. 235 is a little more stable, but... Let's go! Let's nuke the world! Um... Where is it? Where is it currently being kept? Um, she looks at you and goes, "Well, he fucking took it. I don't know how, because I thought it was in my, 
in my bag of holding. Okay. Um, can you um, give Arya the coordinates for that bauxite and ask her what the other materials needed is for the other one? That way we can be on the hunt for it. Or if she can describe what it looks like or anything. Yeah. How to find it, what's the, stuff like that. Because um, I can definitely make a mithril style breastplate for me and whatever armor you want, or do you have armor? I don't have armor, but Ron could probably use something if it's a light armor. I uh, mean, it would take away stealth potentially, but I don't wear armor. It, so. In 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 three five, you have to be proficient with the higher armor before you can get the benefits of the of it reduced, or something. Well, so thank God we're not playing three five. Right. Well, in that case, I can probably get him another breastplate as well. That gives him a what's so that that would give him a uh, fourteen plus four dex possible. And I don't think he has a plus four dex. So, uh, what is your I have a plus dex, two dex. I have a plus so. two dex. My armor class is 15. Yeah. So it would give you one more armor class for me to make you a, a, a breastplate out of that. That's up to you. So, uh, I'll, I'll take it. she tells you Oh, I will add a caveat for the box iron. You would still need the uh, proficiency to have the. It's basically yeah, like three point five. Uh, uh, so basically, since it's a, me a medium armor originally, he wouldn't be able to wear it unless he takes the feat. Right. So that changes things because a feat is a lot more worthwhile than one armor class, in my opinion. So let's see. So, 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 Thortfight. Thortfight will be a black crystal. Surrounded by red rock. Now you will find this in quartz and mica deposits. Oh, and what kind of deposits? Quartz, quartz and, and mica. mica. All right. I was just curious. That's that's really all I needed. Um, should we just keep it with her? Or should I keep it in the bag of holding for now? Uh, whichever you prefer. Well, bag of holdings are limited. I would give it to her. Truth be okay. told. That way we don't... Because that's 21 pounds out of potential 200. Something like that. Um, we do have all those... Um, fucking crossbows and short swords and stuff that's in there currently that we could sell to her. Yeah. Alright, go ahead and uh, well, we can do that off of, uh, off yeah, session. Do that off. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, so if that's it? Yep. Alright. So the next two months roll by, um, and once I get the what uh, what uh, as, as uh, end of semester happens, let's start planning for a Kager again. Yeah. 
you want to? Well, I, I actually, uh, do you guys want to do it now, or do you want to do it in the semester? Well, we can do both. We have a because that's to now would be a we're alive, thank God, kegger, and end of semester would be an end of semester kegger. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, do one to honor all the fallen victims and, or, you know, all, all those that passed in the in the battle. Um, and just kind of try and bring back that community, and then we can do one as just like a last hurrah before, you know, everybody takes their internships and stuff. Okay. Let's call the first one Spring Break. Fall Break? Because this is still, this is still well, this October. Is that is January, February. Yep. You guys are in January, February at the moment. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. um, yeah. Let's call this first one Spring Break. Or Rum Springer, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I like Rum Springer. <laughs> so, how, what is the specifics of this party? What are we, where are you guys going to be serving? Um,. Where are you guys going to host this? Well, same place. Our place worked really well. I would say at least one of those spits needs to be um, kept open, and we can hunt us a deer or something and, and slow roast it all day, or get a cow, get a pig. Yeah, I would say um, I would probably ask... Um... Ah, that fucking Minotaur. His name always escapes me. Bolar? Yeah, Molar. Molar. Uh, I would just like, have Molar, um, Molar, and I go hunting, try and get um, something that'll feed enough people. Because um, I think not only just inviting everybody that we invited last time, but like inviting Grutella and um, you know, like I'm going to go invite Grutella right now. Well. <laughs> you can I'm help go get and... alcohol from her and shit too. Would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I, I think that, um, I mean, Bus, you remember how much that cow, that pig was that we roasted? Yeah. That fed everybody for fucking a month almost. So. Yeah, hey, go the, hunt, go try and take down a wild boar or something. Um, and then use one of those spits to, to cook the whole damn thing. All right. Well, okay, um, so. We'll go with uh, not Greg. As you party fling open party the party tavern party door, party you party notice party. that a familiar set of Northmen are sitting at the bar. God. Uh, ah. they, they're kind of keeping themselves at their table. At the bar, you see, uh, in one of the bar stools, you see the a familiar goblin face you see that the uh, city goblin that you freed from the uh, warehouse and the girl yes okay um, she is sipping um, on a cocktail of some kind you don't recognize it looks like if you had to take a guess some berry juice and some hard liquor of some kind. Awkward. You also notice the familiar face of Grutella. Hey, Already pouring you a shot of elven, fine elven whiskey. Well, I, I, if I kick the door into the, the tavern, I'm going to let it swing close real quick. As it closes, I'm going to look up at the top I'm gonna look up at the sky because I saw the North End, and just go, God, damn it! Just... <laughs> Open the door again. Hey, Grito. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a, hey, if it isn't my favorite half elf. <laughs> half elf, full orc down below. Hopefully, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Only where it counts. I'm huh? just kidding. <laughs> I'm, you feel a I'm large joking. Goliath hand slap you on the back. 
Does he have uh, a beard? Hey. Goliath actually can't <laughs> grow hair. But uh, the fake beard is, has not been replaced. <laughs> hey, Gatella, round of shots for my favorite Northman. Well, I hope you got the coin for that. This one's on the house, and she slides slides a shot over to you. Yeah, slam the shot. How much for the bottle? For you, we'll say five silver. Perfect. Here's ten. Send it over to my favorite Northman. All right, so... You see him kind of smell it, like... You see, they're more used to mead and ale. And... You see one of them, uh, probably the new guy in the group, just try to throw it back and drink it like it's mead or uh, ale. And you see him about lose his shit. I look over to him and he goes, that'll really grow some beard, that'll really grow some hair on your face. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's a human, so he can at least get a little bit going. But yeah, he's, he's pretty fresh-faced. To the Goliath. I so, was talking to the Goliath. Uh, oh, I'm... You see all these scars? I'm very well-traveled in the ways of booze. <laughs> Are, are, are all of us there, or is it just not Greg? Uh, as far as I'm aware of, it's just not Greg. I didn't hear anybody else okay. say they were accompanying him. I think he used my said... little communicator tool. That only goes 150 feet. Tool. Well, if you're standing 150 feet in the bar, hey, boys, get in here. Our favorite Northmen are hanging out. Maybe, maybe not. You hear nothing in response. Well, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what brings you all the way from the Academy? I thought you guys would be, uh, you know, putting things back together. Well, I'm throwing, well, me and my friends are throwing a little bit of a party. Gratella, I need to place an order for some booze. And, uh, well, were you guys here for the previous battle? Um, she kind of looks over. Um, she goes, yeah, actually, we, uh, we kind of thought we'd have to make a last stand in this bar here. We, uh, we thought we'd be on our way to Valhalla, but suddenly... Halfway through the night, they just all kind of disappeared. Well, my friends can tell you exactly what happened if you're willing to come to the party. Uh, we're going to have it a couple weeks from now and looking to have a bunch of people to celebrate the, the heroes of the, of the battle and honor our fallen if you, you know, help us send them off to Valhalla themselves. I'm talking to them, trying to convince them to come. Give me a persuasion check with, uh, because of your guys' disposition with them with advantage. Yeah, persuasion with. Well, oh, that's the fact that I'm pretty damn sure that the entire town knows of our deeds somehow or another. So they'd be like, "Oh, these guys are legend. We'll party with them any day." I got a sixteen. All right. If a long ship's in town at that time. You best know we'll be there. Perfect. Uh, how, like how, I said, how many so weeks is it going to be? Because my my Jarl uh, ha has us here for the month. The end of this month? No, uh, what, what what time of February? Because well, let's just say it, you know. Yeah, we'll the end of this month. All right. Is that uh, okay with you? Yeah, we'll be shipping out to uh, Jarl's business should conclude about uh, two weeks from uh, into into March. Perfect. Um, as, as that conversation's happening, can uh, myself and Molar just walk in with like some form of fucking wild boar or something? I just want to interact with these fucking Northmen real quick. 
Yeah, so you and uh, Molar come strolling in there. Uh, Molar, with his large frame, has a, a boar slacked over his shoulders. And you guys are covered in, in game blood. Sounds about right. <laughs> Uh, uh, just like as we walk in, I want to, I want to just like pinpoint the Northmen that are there, look at the Goliath, and be like, "Hey, look, somebody else's blood this time." <laughs> I thought you were just gonna do the 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 scene from um, Men in Tights, where you just have the pig and you throw it in front of him. Well, I mean, Molar's carrying it, not me. <laughs> if I were carrying it, I would have done that. <laughs> Now, did you get yourself a 200-pounder or 300-pounder? This would be probably. a wild boar, so yeah, probably in that range, 200 pounds. I could carry it, but... We yeah, gotta, we gotta, Mol Molo's already a big, intimidating man, so, you know, I gotta gotta let him go off a little bit. Of course, <laughs> you've gotta make Little John look good. Exactly! <laughs> <laughs> um, just as a... Uh, I want to just buy them another round, and then I'm just going to discreetly go up to the captain and, like, hand him his beard back. <laughs> All right, so he takes it, and we'll oh, see how well he takes All right. So you see the couple veterans that are in there all start to laugh hysterically as his stone gray face turns... Just that sh bright shade of blush red. <laughs> and he goes, yep. I want to fucking hate you right now, but. <laughs> Buy this man a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and. Hey, I'm, I'm just giving you your stuff back. Well, you, you see, you see the new guy who is freshly recovered from trying to chug a bottle on his own disappear, and he comes back and he hands you a bottle of an amber, very very light amber liquid. Ooh! It has a distinct crust put on it in wax. Can I make it? Can I do an interrupt right now, real quick? What are you doing? I'm gonna snap my whip, whip, and and at the bottle and uncork it. Are you there? I'm I'm gonna walk in and see this. Well, I'm gonna yeah. say. Welcome to the bar. Welcome to the bar. Welcome to the bar. <laughs> We're all getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that drunk. We're not that drunk. So as you walk in and snap it. Um... The big, the big uh, Goliath hand actually catches the uh, the whip in his hand. And he goes, oh, no, lad. This is for when we celebrate our brothers in Valhalla. Oh. This, this is a mead to remember. This is a mead that you drink. When you want to feel like you're in the other side. I saw that movie. Didn't it have Mandy Moore in it? Walk to remember. This has our Jarl's signature, or her her seal on, or, or yeah, our Jarl's seal on it, because our Jarl well dabbles a little bit in the mystic arts and makes some of the best damn mead. Ever. Your Jarl? Yes. Did you say she's a she? He has not revealed a, any gender of said Jarl. You did, you did slide side she a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I nudged Gratella three way. Three. Smash a Jarl. <laughs> but uh, as for well, do we have anybody in nobility? Um, I'm I have no. Half half. 
Give me a uh, yep. intelligence check, uh, soldiery, uh, for um, Griffin. So, soldiery means advantage. Yes. Okay. Skills. So basically, I don't have any mods on this because I'm not proficient, or because there's not really a soldiery. Well, this would be intelligence check. Sorry, I'm saying because of your soldiery. You get the That's what's giving you the advantage, yeah. Uh, 13. So you know, uh, because your skirmishes with the uh, Northmen uh, when you were just a scout, that a Jarl is somebody who's probably on the, on the level of a duke or a count. Somebody who's basically the leader of a tribe or a, co a small collective of tribes. Um usually entrusted with uh, a holding or a city or a castle um, nothing big uh, they they report to um, uh, earls who in turn report to the king Hmm. That makes sense. Well, we Morgan's character was like the daughter of a Jarl or something, so we would probably know that from interactions with his character early on. I would say you kind of know that Jarl's because you didn't interact with her much. Um, you know that uh, Jarl's are important in some manner or are uh, some kind of nobility within the uh, um, Northman society. However, a lot of the times you can, you don't have to necessarily be born into Jarldom. You can attain yep. it. You can challenge Jarls, another Jarl in combat and uh, take their role for, uh, from them. Um, and there's other ways. They can be political appointments, too. Uh, by basically being the most popular person within your tribe. Or have done great deeds. Sure. Scarring style. Well, that's usually... It's voted on by what's called a moot. Which is basically, you just have to be the most popular person. So, yeah, usually the guy with the biggest sagas, the most kills, so on and so forth. Okay. But then like, you can challenge him to like a home gang and stuff too, right? A what? A home gang? A home gang? Yeah, H-O-L-M-G-A-N-G. -G. That's like a fight. Okay, yeah. A duel. Yeah, a duel. Yeah. So, he says, tuck that away in your reserves. Bury it in the earth. <laughs> Uh, make sure you're below the frost line. This needs to be served cold. He gives you kind of a crooked smile. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Below the frost line. Okay. I'm going to put it in the bag of holding for now. Um... And I guess I'm just going to proceed to get drunk and hang out with the Northmen. I want to find out as much about their culture being a seafaring culture as like, I can. Just to, to placate my lost time at sea. Like, I'm mostly missing the ocean, so hearing about their exploits on the waters would, would definitely cheer him up a bit. Alright. So you guys... You, uh... So you, you learn that uh, your guys' methods of, of navigation are different, but um, they use what's called a sunstone on a cork board, and you guys use it. Uh, you typically, your crew, would use a... You're able to recall to use a sextant and an astrolabe to navigate. Yep. Uh, Astro laid, am I right? 
take turns in the pirate box. You notice that uh, pretty much everybody's kind of people in the bar, kind of all conglomerated around the group. Um, in fact, Rutella's kind of taking a break from the bar because she's only needed when drinks are being served or needed. Um, and you, uh, as 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 the time goes on, uh, you notice that you haven't been paying attention. But uh, the goblin had been missing, but now she's back. And she hands you guys a water skin. I'll say thank you. She goes, um, I feel like I have to pay my way into it with how cool you guys, or with how well known you guys, or liked you guys are, but this is uh, an old goblin liquor. It's called uh, Thank you. Gut Chuck. Oh God! Yes, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's called what? Gut Chuck. It's gonna be pretty much a con twenty to take to drink this shit. Oh fuck! Well, I'm saving it for the party then. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's test of manhood, right? Now. This is one that that. Um, goblins, orcs, kobolds drink. It's not for humanoid races very well because of the fact that uh, it's pretty much made with rotten meat and some other stuff. <sighs> Should ask that goblin how she's doing. We haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> like, just make she sure she's okay. This... She just brought us this crazy drink. Yeah, I know, but, like, you know, check to see how her mental state is. She responds. Um, she, she's better now. Um, she's actually kind of looking for kind of a, a what to do with herself. Well, what kind of skills do you have? What are you good at? Um, she also introduces uh. herself. Her name is Mimi. Oh. <laughs> Okay. She goes, my father wants me to to follow in his footsteps, but I don't know. I... But her saviors? <laughs> she goes, I... I kind of saw what you guys did, and I kind of want to do that. I don't know what I would be, though. Well, we can definitely um, talk to people. And see if we can get you tested for proficiency. I think we have enough pull that we can do that. Oh. You mean like at the academy with you guys? Yes. Yeah. You kind of see her eyes light up a little bit. Like, oh my god, that would be so great! <laughs> Got a whole cobalt army that you'd probably be friends with, right? Am I right? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get them in too. Yeah, that's a bit They're harder cool to dudes. sell. I would say it would be, especially since she's a what would be considered a civilized creature. Um, it would be an easy sell to get her in. Now, um, she, and, and and you gather through the conversation with her, she kind of doesn't know what she wants to be um, uh, if she were to study, what she, what she would study. Does she want to be a cleric or a bard or an artificer or, or maybe just a fighter? A ranger! A ranger! <laughs> well... Um, I can, I've got a plethora of weapons. I'll take her over to the, to the, um, throwing to the dart range and see what she's got. You just yeah. have a, you just have a sack of weapons. In the bag of holding still. Yeah. God, well, you're like a, you guys are like I'm murder a... Santas. 
<laughs> I'm a walking armory. I've got like seven weapons on me right now. Ho ho ho! Have a machine gun. I mean, I've got a hey. fucking, I've got a javelin, a longbow, a rapier. Yes. First of all, that Santa's welcome at my house any day of the week. That man gets cookies every day. Ho ho ho! Here's a machine gun. That's what is this fucking John McClane into goddamn Santa Claus? Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, I have a machine gun now. <laughs> little Timmy, you were a little bad this year. You only get a pistol. <laughs> oh, man. Daddy was good. He gets a 240. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I wanted the saw. <laughs> you get the 240 and you like it. <laughs> Uh, so, she kind of struggles with uh, some of them. Um, let's see. Now you nerds are making me pull up a weapons chart. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> we've got crossbows, we've got longbows, we've got javelins, we've got rapiers, we've got short swords, we've got daggers. You've got everything. Except for maces. We don't have any very many bludgeoning stuff. Why would you want to bludgeon yeah. things when you can shoot it from like 300 yards away? Well, you can still... Fist. There's a sling for skeletons and stuff like that that are, that are immune or resistant to piercing. True. That's what I got for your brain. Hmm. All right, so what weapon are you guys going to hand her first? To the whip. <laughs> the whip. The whip. Why don't you see if she can throw a punch first? Maybe she's a barbarian. She uh, does not handle the whip well. She actually back back on herself. Oh damn! <laughs> so probably not. I my thing. She throws a punch. She hits it pretty solidly. Okay. Barbarian. Barbarian. Or a monk. Barbarian. Monk. Or a monk. What's the monk, next? Monk will give a fist. Um, I'll give her my longbow. Alright. Uh, she has a little less control, but she's able to, to land a shot. Crossbow. About the same. Short so um, and her my right. Whoa, whoa, too many going off at once. I think Greg was said something first. Uh, I was gonna hand her my long sword. All right. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you took her own leg off, didn't she? <laughs> Medic! <laughs> Medic! She tried to yeah. lift it. She's just like, yeah. <laughs> um, daggers? Okay. Oh, I mean, she, she, she got it. Uh, rapier. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so not she goes to thrust with the rapier and phoop, <laughs> goes right out of her hand. Okay, so um, looks like dagger was pretty much one of the better ones. I mean, the only thing we have left is really a net. Well, there is magic still. Yeah, but I can't teach her that. No, but I can, I can show her like a couple things. I can't teach it to her, but I can show it to her. And if she's interested in it, that might help her like on choosing a path. Well, uh, you can tell... Uh, about the best thing that she did solidly was punch. Um, the next runner-up, you could tell, was probably the dagger. Okay. However, this is completely untrained, too. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just use a... Uh, just look at her and be like, so, so those are weapons. 
but what about magic? And I want to use thaumaturgy to just like blow all the doors and windows open within a thirty foot radius. Like if I'm standing by the door, just want to blow all the doors and windows open. All right. So as soon as you say, what about magic? You wave your hands and <clears throat> all the doors fly open, and and everybody's kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> And then I'll do it again to close them all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So the deafening silence in the room is um, interrupted guys. by <laughs> as all the windows <laughs> close. <laughs> some some guy was sitting in the bathroom with the little door shut and it blew up and he closed on him. <laughs> He's like, no, fuck. You just hear a load, bloop. <laughs> it's the new guy from the Northman. Just out of his mind. He's like, "What the fuck have I got myself into?" He screams, <laughs> "Occupado!" <laughs> uh, and then I'll uh, just for funsies. Put the uh, humor. It's always good to. Oh, fuck. It only does it to me. Um, I'm going to tell her... Uh, tell her just to pick a spot in the bar. Like, point to any any part of the bar. Anywhere within the building. Okay. She Can I shit her, her pants? Uh, is she supposed to tell you what it is? Yeah, just point to it. Okay, yeah, so just tell she, me what it is and point to it. She points to uh, space in between the targets and the, uh, the 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 throwing table. Okay, I'm gonna get with it. I'm gonna pull out my sword. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get within like thirty feet of that spot. Uh, I'm gonna misty step to that spot. So just like ba basically just step cloud of smoke fucking out of there over to um, like by the targets on that table and I'm going to hit the shit out of the target or attempt to. Okay. And if I do, uh, and if I do, I'm going to use ensnaring strike and just cover that shit with vines just to show her kind of how magic can work at different levels. Okay. So go ahead and roll an attack. One. No, it's not a one. <laughs> It's a 15. It's over. It's All right, over so itself. you successfully hit the target. And you, your ensnaring strike goes off and yep. covers the... Uh, it's vines, right, is what it covers it in? Yeah, like, yeah. A, like thorns. Like a thorny vine, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I got McDonald's. Hell yeah. <laughs> I got barbecue mac and cheese waiting for me when we're done. I'm oh, I had chicken out. I had uh, chicken spaghetti with uh, vodka sauce. Ah, fuck. Mm. All right. Scalp potatoes and ham, baby. <laughs> So, yeah, just, just trying not necessarily to show off, but to show her that you know magic is also a possibility of things she can learn. Like okay. she doesn't the have to have the magic. magic. <laughs> I'm waving behind you as you're doing all these fun tricks. Imagination. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you, you got mage hand, don't you? I do, but I don't want. I don't use it very often. <laughs> Last time I yeah. tried to use it, you threw a hammer at me. That's true, I did. <laughs> so she's not too keen on the magic. Oh, bitch. <laughs> I wasted all those spells. I wanted to use prostitution to make her shit her pants. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to the goblin girl. You you did some amazing shit and she wasn't impressed, so I make her shit her pants. Well it's more of she's not not too keen on magic. Oh, okay. Well she will be when she shits her own pants. <laughs> Does Grutella have some puzzle boxes? Or like 
the 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 the, dexter, the, the boxes or the, tre the the puzzles that are normally around bars. Like, um, oh yeah, like bar games kind of stuff. Yeah, couple of them are couple of them are good tests for dexterity. Some of them are good tests for intelligence. So, um, she has a few. Uh, it's kind of like be kind of like the medieval version of Jenga. Is what she has in her bar. Okay. So not the two horseshoes that are chained together, or the uh, I'm just like a yeah, but some last. Correct. Ooh, stealth. We could do a yeah. stealth check by seeing how fast she could steal, or uh, you know, stack it all up. Um, three card money, essentially. See if she can and trick us with stealth. That's sleight of hand. That's not stealth. Okay. Yeah, that's sleight of hand. Uh, part. Sorry, my bad. I'm... We could we could give her like you know a, a quick hide and seek and see how well she could hide. Well, um, she tries to do the cup thing, uh, the three card money, uh, but with cups, uh, you can tell that she is graceful, but uh, she did not do too well. <laughs> she's a monk. I guarantee you, she's a monk right now. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So, but yeah, it. it it shows that you have um, innate abilities. All you need is a little bit of training, and I think you could actually be a very good adventurer in time. So I am willing to put my um, my name on your application letter. I would as well. Did you tell her what you think she's going to be? No. No. Okay. Much should. That's that's a her decision. Well, she's and, she's she's asking you what what you think. Oh, oh, if she's asking, then I will say then I uh, there are some amazing fighters who don't use weapons. They are best by um, by punching for select weapons. I should say. And, and since she, like, moved with, um, she, she did move with some grace, like, there's always the potential for a bard, or, I mean, do you, even a rogue, there's, not all rogues have to be super stealthy, like, you're good with daggers, if you can use the, that dexterity, you can use your movement to get close to people, you can do some damage there as well, you have options. I lean my head up, I lean my head up and look over, not all rogues have to be stealthy, you dick. And I just go back to my drink. <laughs> Overhear his comment and just whisper to myself, yes, dick. <laughs> just go back to my drink. I just look at him, present company included. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, good. Yeah, the fact that I can out-stealth the rogue. I, we both have out-stealthed the rogue. So as the yeah. night wears on... There's something to say about bravery, assholes. <laughs> so as the night wears on, Grutella comes by with a list from her suppliers. And basically it's kind of like, okay, which ones do you want? All uh, of them. And, and it kind of comes clear to you quickly that it's either... Do you want this class A dignified, or do you want this to be a straight up like rager? Rager, rager. Close probably needs the bar. I think uh, that we need we need enough classy stuff to honor everybody at the start. So maybe like just enough for everybody to have one round of fancy stuff and then just well, get stupid. Well, I, I guess let me define that better. Have enough to where people can have a good time, but not get way too shitty, or just go ahead and just balls in, throw everything but the kitchen sink. Okay, we got Vikings, we got Dwarves, we've got Barbarians. I'm going to say probably kitchen sink. Yeah, I would agree. Throw the kitchen sink at him. 
I'm going to say probably it's a soon. cart it's full soon. of good ale. Like we have the fancy You're going to close the bar down. Here's what we're going to do, gents. Gretel is going to close the bar. We are going to charge one gold piece and two silver to get into this party. The gold piece is to honor the dead by raising and erecting a giant memorial to them. One silver for every person who comes in, or uh, the two silver that comes in goes to Gratella for all of the bar drinking needs for this rager. Wait, so you guys oh, are using the bar instead? No. What we're going to do, basically we're going to do a, a cash bar at a wedding. Yeah, but it's going to be for the one gold. It's one gold and two silver to get in. One gold goes to the memorial fund to to have the best builders and masons erect a memorial to those who fell during the battle. And then the two gold, two silvers are for Gratella to bring all the bar, and then the other silvers for whoever's going to be serving the food, cooking. You know, or we want to pay these people to work at this ginormous party. Okay, you do realize that a gold piece is a month's wage for a lot of people? Then would be a worthy donation to the people who gave their lives defending the school, I would think. Or we well, could charge just that, five those silver. That can afford, those that can afford it pay a gold piece. The two silver to pay Grutella, I mean, I'm willing to throw in all but 100 gold of what I have. To, towards the cost. Um, so, and that could even be used to cover, you know, people that can't afford a gold piece to get in. Can I, I just... Said, how about, why don't we do, like, a cash bar, where they pay bar prices at the thing, so they pay it to the, themselves. That's a big thing. I mean, I'll, we can give a, a type, not a type, we can give a uh, uh, a fund for people that are unable to, but predominantly they pay for what they drink. And then that way, and then we can actually just give the servers and all that stuff money instead of a tip wage or something like that. Give them, I'll give them like 10 gold pieces each is, is a year's worth of wage for most people. Yeah, no, I'm okay with that. Works for me. So basically, anybody that's working this party is going to make bank. Mm hmm. And then we can, we'll hold it. Um, I mean, might as well hold it by like our location on the academy or have it in a in an area big enough to you know host as many people from the town and the academy that want to be there and uh, in the large battle arena we can uh, we can talk to the dean and maybe do this on, on the commons since it is a celebration of life she he might be willing to do that as long as it's not getting shit faced. So that yeah, we we do the memorial part on the on the grounds, and then we do the after party at our place, and we yeah. can all get shitty over there. Get shitty, get shitty. So I think that we can probably talk to the dean and maybe uh, give him some good some good pull. Yeah, I'm fine with that. To to make sure that Grutella is paid off, we will buy twenty bottles of good stuff for the memorial service, and in addition to whatever is paid for at the at the kegger. Need to find some form of entertainment as well. So if we can find a or band. recruit the bards or yeah some kind of band to well, 
the bards. I'm pretty sure that we, they might be um, willing to make up a pretty nice uh, band for us. So then we save their asses, too. Yeah. Damn, he's just going all in with that hero complex. Well, well we and if we school. get it. And if we have it on campus, you could have one arena where, you know, for entertainment, where, the, you know, you have a petting area where the, where, the, where the rangers bring in their pets. And you can have an area where there's knife throwing and, and feats of fun. And, hell, you could even have uh-huh. a joust if you really wanted to. A celebratory um, joust to see who the strongest fighter of the remaining is. If you want it, yeah. we did. We're we doing do uh, matches. We can do um, boxing rings. All right. So it looks like we're about to diverge into some serious planning. So let's go ahead yeah. and call that for tonight. And then what I want you guys to do is, if you can, um, put your ideas and anything you want cemented in the Discord. And then we'll hammer out an official plan over the week. That way, come next week, we can execute. Does that sound like a, a plan? Yep. Yeah, great. That also gives you guys the week to, to think. That way it's not all, you know, bam. You know, you have to do it right now. Right. So, I do think that us being all three of us on here uh, collaborating would be a big benefit, too, so we don't have conflicting things going on. Ah, uh, sure. I just, uh, I'm going to tear down the stream and and uh, 